I will. Good afternoon. Good evening. My name is Brian Sikorsky. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm an independent financial planner and wealth advisor with Stratos Wealth Partners. And as a wealth advisor, I help clients work toward achieving their financial goals. And I typically do this uh, through some sort of planning, including financial, insurance, retirement, retirement income, and perhaps education savings, which is our topic for today. Second is I will help them with asset and income protection through providing life, disability, and long-term care insurance. Three is uh, I will help them with investment management. This includes uh, uh, brokerage and fee-based advisory management accounts, and these investments may include stocks, bonds, mutual funds, and exchange-traded funds. And finally, uh, tax-deferred retirement income strategies, uh, which may include uh, fixed, fixed indexed, and variable annuity uh, products. You'll see on your screen here my, my website, uh, very original. The uh, name is uh, www.bryantsikorsky.com, so I usually don't have any difficulty uh, spelling it myself. Uh, we have a picture here of uh, a Lake Crabtree with some uh, nice sailboats on it. Uh, no hurricanes today like we had this past, past weekend. Uh, I just put my website here just to show you that it's a, it's a good place to go to get additional information on different topics. And uh, I'm going to show you here real quick that this presentation that I'm, I'm recording right now uh, is going to be, you see up in the upper right-hand corner here where it says a little YouTube uh, icon. If you click on that, it'll take you to my YouTube channel. And you'll see where last month I did a webinar on long-term care insurance and prior to that, outlook for the markets and the economy, et cetera. And so I have a whole, uh, whole library of different videos here that you can watch at your, at your convenience. Okay. Now today's topic is uh, on, uh, you know, saving for college or how to pay for uh, college. And I'm going to try to share with you uh, perhaps five different um, steps towards a, a successful saving strategy. And why in the world should we even have to worry about this? Well, college is expensive, and generally the cost is rising faster than inflation. On top of that, many of us have competing financial goals and obligations, like saving for or paying, paying off a house, saving for retirement, or even caring for uh, aging parents. So it's not surprising that many families feel completely overwhelmed and put off saving for education. But the good news is that it's not never, and it's not and never too late, and it's really not that difficult. We're going to identify five basic steps to coming up with a solid education savings plan. And we're going to probably focus a little bit more on one plan in particular, and that's the 529, it's called Savings Plan, because it is without a doubt the most prevalent plan out there at the moment. All right, so what will we be covering today? Number one, the David Letterman list. Number one, why save for college? Number two, what is our five step strategy? Uh, number three, what is are the sources? of financial aid. For what is FAFSA? As soon, as soon as your kids hit middle or high school, you will hear all about FAFSA, the Federal Student Aid Form. What is this thing called an expected family contribution? And again, a kind of a summation of some of these different um, FAFSA, uh, State of North Carolina um, founded, if you will, uh, and managed savings plan, and then collegeboard.com, kind of a resource for you. Investment, uh, well, you know, investment in investing, excuse me, in college is expensive. It's also one of the most important keys and contributors to financial independence and, quote, success. Uh, if we look here, 
uh, this statistic uh, was shown by the U.S. Census Bureau um, that in their lifetime, the average college graduate earns a million dollars more in income over the average uh, high school graduate. Uh, so we see here, you know, the, the high, with a high school degree, uh, a college degree nearly doubled, and a graduate degree with another uh, maybe 20% increase. So how much will it really cost? Many parents and grandparents don't really know what they're up against. How much does college really cost? So let's take this little quiz. Who can guess how many, uh, how much four years of, uh, now this in this case is private college, uh, will cost in, uh, in about 18 years now, including tuition fees, room and board? Is it A, 140,000, B, 240,000, C, 340,000, or D, 440,000? Well, if you guessed 440,000, you are correct. So we're going to explore this cost a little further in a few minutes. But it should be clear that in order for any of us to come up with that kind of sum, even a decent portion of it, we need to have a plan in place sooner rather than later. So as the cost of college continues to climb, more and more families can't save the entire amount, especially if there is more than one child to plan for. Increasingly, families are looking to their financial advisors to assist them in developing a, a complete uh, college funding strategy. So what are the barriers to successful college investing? Well. Uh, first of all, many parents make the mistake of thinking they have all the time in the world to save for college. It seems so far away, it's not immediate, so they put it off. Two is they have competing uh, priorities, whether it's uh, saving for retirement, supporting aging parents, spending money on braces, hockey camp, piano lessons, you name it. Next, there's maybe uh, I hate to say this, too many savings options. It's kind of confusing. Which one do I do? So I think the most important thing of all is to commit to getting started. So this funding strategy would be one that included, uh, number one, uh, perhaps some type of college savings plan, and that might be a 529 as a, as a foundation. Then number two is to look for scholarships, uh, grants, scholarships and grants which don't have to be uh, repaid or maybe a work study program where the, the student would get paid for doing some sort of part-time work while they're in college. And then last but not least, look at some types of loans, whether they're st uh, government-sponsored student loans or privately held private bank loans. So number one, determine the cost of college. This is our first of five steps. Uh, that means getting a real dependable estimate on the actual cost of college for the years your child will be attending. Uh, there's many different calculators online. There's even one on my website. Uh, I guess the one thing I would uh, suggest is that you at least look at the college or university in which one or two or three of them that your, uh, you or your child are most interested in, and they will typically have their own calculators and will take into account specifically how much their individual costs are as opposed to a generic nationwide average. Number two, identify your savings profile. This is a little bit about your values as much as it is about your financial goals. Three, set your savings goal. This is the amount you plan to or are able to save. Four is choose some kind of savings vehicle. For many, it's a 529 plan. And finally, number five, establish a schedule. Get it started. Uh, without a doubt, I would highly recommend that for anyone who puts any type of plan together like this, uh, you would want to have it automatically uh, debited
from a, a checking or savings account. If you say, oh, I'm going to mail in a check every month, you'll never do it, trust me. So we mentioned determining the cost of college both now and later uh, based on some figures from the college board and assuming college costs continued an increase in an average of a little over 5% per year. Those who will be in college during the 2012 to 2016 school years will face tuition fees, room and board expenses of between 97 and $191,000 depending upon whether they're in uh, public or, or private. And to start savings today for college for a child born in 2012, investors need to consider the projected cost of college 18 years down the road, between 222000 and 437000 um, I, I actually added this slide myself about a year ago and you know, did some checking. And this shows uh, our local colleges and universities for those of you that are in the Raleigh, North Carolina area. And you can see that uh, uh, UNC or NC State and UNC are, are quite close, around 8,500 for tuition annually, room and board of about 10,000 books, some personal expenses. Now, uh, for whatever reason, I grabbed this right off of their website and UNC allocated an additional thousand dollars for personal expenses. Don't honestly really know why. And then we have Duke, which is obviously a private college and its costs are therefore about two and a half times as much. So we mentioned what are your values? What are your objectives? You know, how do you feel about this? Did you pay for your own college? yourself. So you want to identify your savings profile. Just because college may cost thousands of dollars, that may not mean that you want to pay for the whole thing. You should figure out what kind of saver you are. What are your financial goals? Um, what are your financial means? So, I, you know, I, I look here at uh, a couple of different profiles. Number one, uh, maybe you were somebody who paid for your own way and you feel that your child or grandchild uh, will, will build their character by paying for college themselves. It'll be a more meaningful accomplishment. It's a perfect, perfect time to grow up financially. It's a family history or ham, uh, family um, value, if you will. Uh, and I guess financially it's realistic. Uh, you know, the, the child won't have to pay, I mean, excuse me, you won't have to pay anything out of pocket. Choice B, which I will tell you quite frankly, was, uh, is probably where most people fit, and that is that college is, in all honesty, competing with a number of many financial goals, and, and uh, parents will explore scholarships and other funding to augment the family's contribution. And in many cases, uh, they may have more than one child, which does complicate matters. Or C, uh, I'll fund it all. Uh, uh, you know, college is a priority. I can and want to provide this for my child. I want my child to experience all that college has to offer. Uh, we're willing to make sacrifices for this, or maybe a, a grandparent wants to leave a legacy for their grandchildren. So understanding your profile helps you determine a college savings plan that's right for you and the child. Now, I won't go into the, you know, minuscule detail of these different plans, but I at least want to share with you a couple of them just so you, you know, when you hear these being discussed, you, you'll, you'll say, oh, you know, I kind of remember what that is. Number one, a Coverdell education savings account is really nothing more than a savings account uh, that has a tax structure in which the assets get taxed at the child's um, tax bracket as opposed to uh, an adult's tax bracket. Uh, the second one is a uniform transfer or gift to minors. This is where you or I would gift money to a, a child or a grandchild. And again, now it's taxed at their tax rate. 
uh, I'll skip trust for just a second. We look at like savings bonds. I remember that when I was a kid that grandparents would save savings bonds for the kids. Now, the trade-off is there's no tax advantage to doing this. A traditional taxable account, just saving money at a checking savings investment account. Uh, this is an interesting one we're going to cover uh, again here too is Roth IRAs. You know, it's a after-tax contribution that can be withdrawn. Our principal can be withdrawn at some point in the future. Uh, life insurance, where uh, some type of cash value or quote permanent life insurance policy is purchased and kind of overfunded uh, so that it grows down the road and and withdrawals can be made tax-free. Uh, and then prepaid tuition uh, or college savings plans. Uh, I kind of left trusts back there. Uh, trusts really are uh, just a, a more of a legal a terminology, a legal account formation in which uh, some money is set aside or specifically directed towards a specific individual if the uh, uh, the primary trustee passes away. Not not possibly not the most tax efficient vehicle possible. Um, so the things that you know usually go into considerations here uh, here are you know which ones allow the child complete access and control to the money. So you know gifts. Uh, uh, savings bonds, as, et cetera. Uh, if you, you know, gift money to these kids, and then once they turn 18, they can go buy uh, a motorcycle with it, and you had hoped that, that they would use it for college. Uh, conversely, something like a 529 college savings plan, uh, if used for something other than some form of higher education, uh, can result in taxes and tax penalties. So kind of the things that go into the decision process are uh, what are the tax ramifications, maybe along with that, you know, what are the investment choices and anticipated rate of return? Um, you know, what are the, the, the accessibility? What are the um, penalties if, if something happened? and that money needed to be accessed in an emergency. So what are the different types of 529 plans? Well, number one is a prepaid tuition plan. So essentially, a prepaid tuition plan is really nothing. It's typically sponsored by individual states. I remember I'm originally from Michigan, and Michigan had the Michigan Education Trust. And essentially what you're doing is you're, you're paying for college today at today's prices and then re taking that ticket, if you will, that receipt, and at some future date showing up at that college or university and you know, your, your child or grandchild showing up and saying, hey, we already paid for this 18 years ago. I know 18 years ago, a full year was only 20,000 and now it's 80,000. So I'm here to, to cash in on my $80,000 worth of education with my $20,000 check here, my, my receipt. So I, I equate that to going to a car dealership and saying, hey, you know, I'm not gonna need a new car for 20 years. So how about I give you 20 grand today? I'll pick up that $40,000, whatever, Jeep, huh, in uh, 20 years from now. Oh, uh, I guess that's good. The, the only challenge is what if the child doesn't go to college uh, and or what if the child goes out of state? We start to run into problems there. If they don't go to college and that money gets withdrawn, taxes and penalties uh, accrue. If uh, the child decides to go out of state, uh, that ticket may not be worth, quote, as much as it was worth if it had been used in the in the previous or initial state of residence. So that kind of refunding process can be a little challenging. So these prepaid plans pay for future semesters of college at today's prices. 
Only 10 states still offer this, and North Carolina is not one of them. College savings plans, conversely, are the most popular means of college savings today. Uh, and there are state plans like the College in North Carolina plan, and then there's mutual fund national plans that can be used anywhere in the country. That That's more of an issue um, in states that offer a tax credit for participation in a college savings plan. North Carolina is not one of them. They did have it, but now they do not. So if I'm not mistaken, Michigan still has it. I think you'll get a $500 state of Michigan tax credit if you participate in the state of Michigan sponsored plan. Why 529 college savings plans? Well, because they they operate a little bit like or much like what you would think of as a Roth IRA. You, you make contributions to it on a after-tax basis. You get to select your investment alternatives of choice. And then if withdrawn and used for higher forms of, uh, high, forms of higher education, there are no taxes due of those, with, uh, of those withdrawals. Uh, they allow professional money management. Like I said, you can pick your fund that you like. You, you as the parent or grandparent, have control of the money. The, the child does not. They are the beneficiary. Um, and uh, you can change the beneficiary if um, uh, the primary ben uh, beneficiary dies or decides not to go to college. So if you've got two kids and you take out two plans and one child goes into the military or whatever, gets a scholarship, free ride, full ride, free ride, uh, you can change the beneficiary of child B's plan over to child A, or you can change it back to yourself if you want to go back to school. And relatively flexible. Um, like I said, the only limiting factor is if you try to use it for non-forms of higher education. So what are the considerations? Do you pick a do-it-yourself plan? So there are some plans where you just go on to uh, a website and you open the account and you uh, make a contribution and you pick your own investments. Uh, or there are plans that uh, allow you to use maybe your current or a, a, a future financial advisor. Uh, does the plan offer a state tax credit? Are the investments index funds, uh, meaning that they just um, buy and hold uh, and copy, if you will, an index like the S&P 500? Or are they actively managed to try to uh, uh, you know, accommodate rises and falls in the market? Some people want that and then some don't. Uh, do they have a good and wide range of investment uh, funds to choose from? Uh, is their website uh, accessible, educational, and clear and easy to use? And how do they charge you? Do, do they charge you a, a fee or do you pay an upfront commission? And do you qualify for a discount? So if you have mutual funds from one fund family in your IRA, in your Roth IRA, uh, you may qualify for a commission discount if you contribute uh, and open an account and contribute to that same company's plan. So I'll uh, just pick American funds. If you have them in your IRA and you uh, open a, a, a College America fund, you could get a, a discount. If you do it with maybe some of the other plans like Putnam, et cetera. So you might want to look at what holdings you have today, what mutual fund family predominates your portfolio to determine which fund family you might want to consider for your college, uh, your child or grandchild's college savings plan. I mentioned get the savings scheduled and started monthly, annually, lump sum. I hate lump sums. I hate, hate annually. I'm telling you right now. The only ones I like are monthly. You just won't do it. You'll find an excuse that plasma TV you've been waiting for goes on sale. You want it to come out of your 
checking account or savings account or paycheck if your employer allows it uh, every single month. If you wait uh, and your child attends a private university in 18 years uh, at, at a cost of $437,000, if you start today, uh, your monthly contribution to pay full ride will only be $1,200. But if you wait 5, 10, or 15 years, you can see how it will be $2,000, $4,000, $11,000 uh, a month, which not many people can afford to catch up. If you can't save the entire cost of college, what sources of federal student aid are available? Well, available at no cost to students are scholarships, grants, and work study. And while most people have a tendency to think of the scholarships that the selected college or university to which the child or grandchild is applying, don't overlook a number of other scholarships from like fraternal organizations like Rotary, Kiwanis, um, essays. Um, employers uh, sometimes have uh, scholarship contests. So don't, don't limit your search to just um, those uh, offered through the college or university that your child or grandchild um, is applying to. Uh, grants, uh, unlike scholarships, which typically require students to maintain certain requirements, such as a minimum GPA or number of credit hours, grants often come with no, quote, strings attached. Uh, federal work study programs, um, providing part-time jobs located both, both on and off of campus for students who demonstrate a financial need. And then, as I mentioned, student loans both federally backed and privately offered, like from a bank or credit union. How do we apply for federal aid? How do we complete this FAFSA form, which is the free application for federal student aid form? Uh, you will go online at fafsa.gov and you will fill out a form which will ask you a million questions about you, your family, uh, you're married, uh, how many kids do you have, what's your income, what are your savings, what are your investments, and it looks at all these numbers, and then it comes down and says, bang, um, you know, we feel uh, whatever, the, let's say the number is $20,000 for one year of college. FAFSA will say, well, it, that your family should have the wherewithal to pay the first, pick a number, $5,000, and then you can go ahead and apply for the other $15,000, um, uh, you know, through a through a, a a student loan. Okay. What are the most important factors in calculating the expected family contribution? So this EFC takes into consideration both the students and the parents' assets and income. Now, we'll take a deep breath on this one, okay? Listen, specifically, 20% of the students' assets, such as bank accounts or UTMA, we'll see that, UGMA, UTMA, uh, uniform gift, custodial accounts, and 50% of the students' income, such as money earned from a summer job, are included. Two, up to 5.6% of the parents' assets and between 22% and 47% of the parents' income are counted. Additional factors such as how many children are in the family and how many are in college also have an impact. So remember I said different plans. There's that UGMA, UTMA, holy cow. It is, or savings account or uh, uh, what do you call it, savings, bonds, et cetera. Wow, those are all getting counted because they're an asset of the child. So you can see why maybe, um, you know, uh, the types of plans in which they're titled in the owner of the child are, are, are possibly not the best alternative. 
because of this reason. How are 529 exclusively, 529 plan assets and distributions from them counted in the expected family contribution? 529 plan, really key here, 529 plan owned by a parent is treated as a parental and not a child's assets. Big difference. Remember, child's is like uh, uh, up to 50%. A parent's only 5.6%. Distributions from parent-owned plan, however, are considered income, and third-party-owned plans, such as grandparents, are treated differently. So you can see where they, uh, uh, the grandparent in this situation, the grandparent, um, their income gets considered uh, to the tune of 50%. So I'm not, you know, not real keen uh, on, on grandparents gifting as much as parents uh, because of that reason. Is it true that it's better to use a Roth IRA to save college because it doesn't affect the expected family contribution calculation? Well, not necessarily. It is not reported as an asset on the FAFSA. That is true. However, distributions from the Roth must be reported as untaxed income, and they will show up on the following year, your sophomore, your child's sophomore year's FAFSA, and will be counted at 22 to 47 percent in the following year. Holy cow, right? Not 5.6 percent. So I'm not a big fan of this, as you can tell. So college is years away. Can we estimate how much federal financial student aid our child may qualify for without filling out the entire FAFSA? Yes, you can use the FAFSA forecaster. How original, right? It provides an early estimate of eligibility. It's offered at the website of federal student aid at studentaid.ed.gov forward slash FAFSA slash forward slash estimate. Here are some other resources that you might want to consider. Um, uh, such as scholarships.com, which is a private database of uh, nearly 3 million scholarship opportunities. Remember I said don't, don't limit yourself to just uh, the schools. Uh, number two, uh, Career InfoNet, which is the U.S. Department of Labor's database of additional or more than 5,000 more scholarship opportunities. Grants. Uh, and work study programs. With regards to student loans, here are a whole list of, of uh, sites that you can look at. Studentaid.ed.gov, uh, looking at things like Perkin, Perkins loans, uh, 5,500, 8,000, direct subsidized Stafford loan, direct unsubsidized Stafford loan, direct plus loan, uh, private student loans if the student doesn't have sufficient funds and can't qualify for uh, federal student aid. And last one here is you know, really big, is a good place to get started uh, you know, on an on a individual level is both with your financial advisor who knows your financial situation in concert with number two, your school's financial aid office, uh, who uh, are, are knowledgeable predominantly about colleges and universities in the, same, in the same state in which they are located. So with that, I will say thank you for joining me today. I hope you learned a few facts. Uh, this webinar will be uploaded tomorrow to my YouTube channel, which you can access via my website, bryantsikorsky.com, which I mentioned at the outset. Uh, if there's anything else that I can do for you, uh, give me a call. Uh, I can be reached at my website, bryantsikorsky.com, or by phone, 
6501527. Thanks very much and have a great rest of your day.